Ireland, you've had your fun. Now share, will you? That's what you told us a kid, sharing is caring. Can you let some of the rest of us have a look in, please? They're quite a good rugby team, aren't they, Ireland? Let's talk about their game against Italy. A victory by 36 points to nil. And yeah, plenty to, to discuss on this one about that and as we reflect on the weekend as a whole. So your thoughts, as ever, down in the comments. Get stuck in there. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. I just want to mention the man of the match, as far as I'm concerned. Um, man of the match, from my perspective, that little lad. See, I was in France uh, and I took this channel all up and down France during the Rugby World Cup. And we had to put up with those child choirs, which was a lovely cause. The execution was not great. Generally speaking, I would actually prefer to just hear the music or a band and let the crowd do the work. I will make an exception for this young man. Absolute box office. Best performance of the weekend. By bar none. Absolute. One kid belting it out and then giving it a come on Ireland at the end. I'm here for it. Absolutely loved it. And also, one thing I love about watching games... Uh, on the telly in Dublin is just seeing the, the comical sight of the, the sorry, is it president or prime minister? I can't remember. Him. <laughs> Wee little man shaking hands with some giant humans. Uh, I'm here for that as well. And ultimately, um, I, I'm here for the way Ireland are, are trying to play rugby. And here's a question for you to start with as we review this. And again, I've, the final whistle's just gone. This is my... Thoughts spilling straight out of my head and onto this video. What gear do you reckon Ireland got into in that match? I'm thinking, I'm thinking with a five gear gearbox, for example. I reckon Ireland were probably third gear today, and still handily, handily put Italy away. And you know, some people will say Italy are poor. I, I would credit Ireland more than saying Ireland didn't bring their A game. I mean, Italy were always going to struggle a little bit without some of their big focal points, their two biggest ball carriers in Sebastian Negri and Lorenzo Canoni. Those are a massive losses for them out of their pack. They do not have a lot of depth. But it's it, it's the slickness and the, it's the speed at which Ireland do everything that makes it really hard for teams that they play against. I mean, they bamboozled France last week. Is it any wonder that they, they had Italy on toast? without playing anywhere near their best. So I, I'm going to stop short of criticising Italy on that one. I just think Ireland are that good. Yes, Italy fell off a few tackles, but that said, in terms of their defensive effort, I thought their scramble defence and some of the one-on-one -on -one hits they put in were, were, were bone-crunching and, and really committed. And they started quite well, but they just, they just cannot live with Ireland, who are... And, well, here's the question. So this is more broadly across the weekend and with the context of the tournament as it sits. Another question that you can get stuck in the comments down below. Uh, <laughs> how would you rank that weekend? Because uh, uh, it, it seemed like the, a lot of people are thinking it was quite dull. The two games yesterday, I mean, it was a br brilliantly exciting end to the game in, in, Murray, uh, in Edinburgh at Murrayfield. There was, it was a close fought game in London at Twickenham. Uh, this one was it was a total beatdown, but the the two games yesterday slightly low on quality, high on kind of tension, but but low on quality in some parts. And and some people might argue that there was a, a slight lack of quality with 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 the the match here and the fact it was so lopsided. And basically, our Ireland here cruising to a grand slam. Who can stop them? Scotland on the last day in Dublin looks like they're a tough tough assignment. I I can't see England. The way things are, unless England drastically improve, I can't see them standing in Ireland's way. Um, and any, anyway, one thing you can say if you're an Ireland fan is you're now, you're, you're no longer going into a game worrying about Johnny Sexton getting injured. <laughs> um, and this guy's doing the business, isn't he? He's doing what needs to be done, making good choices. And um, uh, check out his face when he ran through to score that first try. Love it. Uh, Jack Crowley... Um, He's doing all he can at this point in time. Again, he will have much, much tougher tests. By the way, if you're an Ireland fan, one reason to hit subscribe on the channel, if you get value from it, is the fact that I'm going to Ireland v South Africa in July this year. I'll be at those two tests and I am absolutely buzzing about it. That's going to be the real test for Jack Crowley and this team. 
And that's what it feels a little bit like now. Now they've dispatched France. It feels like they're going to be trying to build momentum through this year for that South Africa challenge. Because I'm not sure there is a team that can properly challenge them in this Six Nations. There are some teams in transition. There are some teams that are building. There's some that have dropped off from where they were. Ireland feel like they're at a high level and it's really good. And, and again, the context here is they can be a lot better than they were today. Interestingly, the bookies, the, one of the reasons I don't bet generally, uh, well, partly when I work in rugby, I'm not allowed to bet. Um, that's just the rules. But also because the, the bookies know what they're talking about. They gave Ireland, I, I looked at the odds, um, a 34-point head start. That was the handicap on this one. And they won 36 points to nil. Uh, I love how the stadium announcer uh, at, at the Aviva Stadium sh uh, had massive enthusiasm for the nil. Ireland 36, Italy nil. It was, to be fair, that will be one of the things that will please Ireland the most. I think it's the first time I heard in comms that's the first time they've ever nilled Italy in a match. Um, and that's no mean feat. And it shows they had to be working on both sides of the ball. Um as for the actual game itself, well, yeah, Jack Crowley opened the scoring, uh, didn't convert his own try, but did convert Dan Sheehan try. That was Dan Sheehan popping up on the wing. Ireland have got a few players that could be quite handy in wide channels. Ryan Baird, he's rapid. He could be a centre or a winger outright. Dan Sheehan seems to do the business when he's out there. Uh, Jack Conan got himself a try. Oh, I haven't got a picture of uh, Jack Conan there. Um, then there was a Dan Sheehan try. Then it was James Lowe. There's James Lowe. Uh, in between that, Robbie Henshaw had a try disallowed for a double movement. And by the way, bearing in mind what we've seen over this weekend, that is how you do a TMO decision for that Robbie Henshaw try. Luke Pearce, want to have a look? Let's go to the TMO. Add a look. Yep, double movement. Done. Penalty. Brilliant. Thank you for that, at least. And I think the right decision was made there. Uh, yeah, Jack Conan got himself a try. Just power from that man. And that means, because you've got guys like Jack Conan coming in to a starting 15 and doing what he does. It means when guys like Josh van der Fleer come off the bench after 60 minutes, he's got to go and perform. It just drives the standards. And you can I, I, that's, that, that was one of the points where I felt for Italy. Like they're already points down. They've got some of their key men not available. And, oh, I'm absolutely exhausted, but at least there's only 20 minutes till the end of the game. Oh, what's that? Josh van der Fleer's running on. Crikey. Um, and then, yeah, James Lowe got a try. Calvin Nash scored a try again. Two and two. Doing all right so far, isn't he? Um, yeah, because Ireland are missing a couple of players in, in Mac Hansen. They're, they're having some, some changing of the guard in that sense or some other people getting opportunities. I did think a lot of Ireland's handling was, was crisp. Um, with Sharp, you can see what they were trying to do with the out-the-back ball. We've seen that loads of times, but they're going for the, the, the pass again quickly because Italy are trying to fly up and shut that down. But Ireland knew that was coming, and they quite often managed to get themselves to the outside. That said, I think they will, will reflect that they left some chances out there. I think Craig Casey, some of his passing choices weren't perfect. He might be one guy that started this week that could be going away. I don't know, a little bit disappointed perhaps. And I wonder if, when it comes to the big games, maybe those South Africa tests, on, on, on the back of games like this, whether Conor Murray will be the man that's on the bench behind Jameson Gibson Park. I like I like Craig Casey a lot. Um, there was a few mistakes, some of which I don't totally blame him for, but he will possibly be the one that looked not too good out of it. Prop, do Ireland have enough depth at prop? I'm trying to be constructive here because it's such a good team. Do they have enough at Lockman and O'Toole? Are they quite at the level you need when um, with guys coming off? I mean, we've seen Tom O'Toole in the past play very well. Mm. I don't know. Not not got a, a great deal to say. I'm, I'm trying to think of constructive. I'm trying to think of little glimmers of hope for other countries, to be honest. But this was a day where in the stands was Tyg Furlong and Tyg Byrne. Um, watching on. Gary Ringrose still to come back fit. Mac Hansen injured to come back. It's not fair. Uh, by the way, um, just talking about stuff around the game, Ireland, uh, you are playing zombie a little bit too much, I reckon. Do you, don't you think? Did I, did I hear zombie getting played after a try today? No, 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 no. 
you can have too much of a good thing. And I think that I, I was there. I was at the Champions Cup quarter final match. Amazing game at the Aviva Stadium between Munster and Toulouse. Heartbreaking defeat for, for Munster, the, the loss on penalty kicks. And that's where that song, it was played at half time, wasn't it? It was played at half time and the atmosphere was incredible in that ground. And that was a real moment. And I, and I gather, I, I mean, I may well be wrong in saying this, but I gather that's where the kind of zombie by the Cranberries thing began. And then it carried on and it became a big thing at the Rugby World Cup. And then South Africa pinched it a little bit, changing the word from zombie to Razzie. But let's not do it all the time. Like, keep just simmer it and then it will stay special for longer. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's the question. Do I, Where do Ireland go from here? Do they go back? to the team that played against France. I think they probably do in the main part. That might be the easiest way to frame that question. Who, who wasn't in the France game, might have played themselves into the next match in a fortnight's time. Who played well enough that came in that might oust one of the guys they replaced? I'm not sure. I'm not sure there is any. No, I'm not sure there is any. Um... Ryan Baird, like I say, he's, he's impressive. He was on the bench, though, against France, against France, wasn't he? Yeah. And they've got some talent. They've got some talent. As for Italy, just to return to them for a minute. Again, I think the, I think the context is important. It's deflating. It must be deflating to be an Italian fan and look at that scoreboard. And also, it's disappointing to see, you know, after all these years of Italy have been in the competition and... They have the odd little moment where they go close. 70 minutes last year against Ireland. They look good. This year, totally blown away. You kind of hope that it is going to happen. Their under-20s pushed Ireland all the way. And Ireland got a very good under-20 setup. And Ireland, what was it, 23-22 in the under twenty. So Italy are producing young players. I think, that, do they need a little bit more time? They definitely need a lot more depth. And they're a totally different team when you take just a couple of the big names out. So um, there's improvements to be made that need to be made there. But well done, Ireland. Um, very, very good rugby team who did not play at, at anywhere near their best in that Italy game and still had way too much. And they're on track for back-to-back -back Grand Slams. I'm not sure anyone can stop them. Tell me what you think. Comments down below. Hit subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next one.